Well, good morning, Mr. Secretary. I think I don't even have to say that you're being welcomed very warmly by all the employees here. But, Mr. Secretary, Deputy Secretary Nides, um, on behalf of all the employees of the Department of State, it's a privilege and honor and a very great pleasure to me to welcome you here today. Your Your, your wealth of experience and leadership qualities will inspire and guide us as we carry out United States foreign policy in the challenging times ahead. Uh, as the son of a diplomat and a member of the United States Senate, deeply engaged in American diplomacy over many decades, you bring to this office a unique perspective and knowledge of both politics and diplomacy and of the importance of a professional career foreign service as the backbone of American diplomacy in the Department of State. Des Despite our necessary focus on conflicts and counterterrorism, our values, vision, and interests call for an overarching diplomatic engagement recognized worldwide as a leadership role worthy of the United States on behalf of the greater good of mankind. It's truly uh, a great pleasure for us to welcome you here. And we trust that under your stewardship, all parts of the State Department team will gain in stature and recognition and enhance our professional capabilities to be fully prepared to meet the challenges these difficult times demand. As we commit our support and loyalty to you, Mr. Secretary, I also take this opportunity to express our gratitude to outgoing Secretary Hillary Rodham Clinton for her tireless efforts to... for her tireless efforts to promote U.S. national interests overseas, to strengthen the Department of State and the U.S. Agency for International Development, to promote and raise the profile of diplomacy and development as critical tools of our national statecraft. And as we all together, uh, Mr. Secretary, follow your leadership, we look forward to continuing this effort. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sir. Deputy Thank Secretary. You. Secretary. Well, it's my great honor and privilege 
to introduce someone who is passionately cares about this institution, about the men and the women that are here, not only because you're the son of a diplomat, and not only because you've been the chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, and not only because you have traveled the world on our behalf, it's because you care passionately about what we do and the vision in which we attempt to try to show to the rest of the world. So on behalf of the men and women, not only in this room, but all over the world who is watching, let me introduce to you the 68th Secretary of State, John Kerry. Thank you very much. Wow, way back there. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Susan. Thank you very much for that welcome. Uh, Secretary Nides, who's an old friend, uh, I'm grateful to him. I told him that's probably the first and only time he's ever bowed to me. And <laughs> I know I'll never ever get that again, but anyway. Uh, thank God I had a couple of photo IDs so I could get in. It was, <laughs> you know, happy for that. Uh, Secretary Kennedy, thank you very much for your leadership. Ambassador Marshall, I'm really looking forward to working with you and with all of you. Um, I have to tell you, I, I, I liked my cubicle over there in Transition Corner. <laughs> but I cannot tell you how great it feels to sort of be liberated to know that I actually get to explore the whole building now. Uh, so I've been freed. I'm the first person you guys freed today. This is pretty good. Um, and if I'm wandering around the building later and I sort of wind up in your office, uh, it's not because I'm there for a meeting. It's because I'm lost and I need directions. <laughs> so just tell me who you are, tell me what you do, and tell me where I am. <laughs> Uh, and we'll rely on that. So here, here's the big question before the country and the world and the State Department after the last eight years. Can a man actually run the State Department? <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, as the saying goes, I have big heels to fill. But uh, this, this is beyond a pleasure. Uh, I, you know, I'm going to utter th five words that certainly no sitting senator and probably a former senator have ever uttered, and that is, these remarks will be brief. Uh, and I promise you that, because I don't know what we're doing for the productivity of the building right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> If, if this goes on too long, I may get a phone call from the president on a recall, you know. <laughs> um, I want to begin by thanking my predecessor, Secretary Clinton, and I want to thank her entire team. They tirelessly uh, advocated the values of our country and pushed for the, uh, for the accomplishment of any number of things to advance the interests of our nation. I know from my conversations with Hillary how passionate she was about this undertaking and how much confidence and gratitude she had for the work that every single one of you do. And uh, I just want to join with all of you today in saying to her, job well done, the nation is grateful, the world is grateful. Thank you, Hillary Clinton, and thank you, her team. Thank you. <clears throat> I also uh, want to thank President Obama for his trust in me to take on this awesome task and for his trust in you, every single one of you and what you do every single day. Uh, I think it is beyond fair to say uh, that this President's vision and what he has implemented through your efforts over the course of the last years without any question has restored America's reputation and place in the world. And we thank you for what you have done to do that.
Now, I said the other day uh, at the hearings, if any of you had a chance to see any of it, that uh, I said that the Senate was in my blood. And it is after 28 plus years. But it is also true that the Foreign Service is in my genes. And everything that we do here is. I have a sister who worked for most of her career in New York at the UN and most recently at the UN mission. Uh, my wife, uh, who was born in Mozambique, and you will see here on a Wednesday, uh, speaks five languages. Uh, at some occasion did some translating, but mostly worked with the then UN Trusteeship Council and has powerful beliefs in the mission of this great department and of USAID. And my father, as was mentioned, uh, spent a number of years as a foreign service officer. And I come here with these 28 years uh, of stewardship of the Foreign Ser Relations Committee and oversight of the, foreign, of the department, oversight of the budget, oversight of everything we do. And so I'm glad to represent your favorite committee among ma many favorite committees on the Hill. Uh, but I will tell you that I have things to learn for sure. Uh, and I know that, and as much as I have to learn, I have learned some things. And some of what I've learned is how difficult life can be for people in the Foreign Service who have to uproot kids and uproot families and move from school to school and struggle with those difficulties. It's not hard, not easy, and it's particularly not easy in this much more complicated and dangerous world. So I understand that. Uh, I also understand uh, how critical it is that you have somebody there advocating for you. The dangers could not be uh, more clear. We're reminded by the stars and names on the wall, and we are particularly reminded by uh, Chris Stevens and Glenn Doherty and Tyrone Woods and Sean Smith. And I know everybody here still mourns that loss, and we will. So I pledge to you this. I will not uh, let their patriotism and their bravery be obscured by politics, number one. Number two, I guarantee you, <laughs> and I guarantee you that beginning this morning when I report for duty upstairs, everything I do will be focused on the security and safety of our people. We have tough decisions to make, but I guarantee you I'll do everything I can to live up to the high standards that Secretary Clinton and her team put in place. Now, I, I mentioned earlier the sort of earlier part of my life. I will tell you, I was back in Boston uh, two weeks ago, and um, I was rummaging through some old stuff, and I found the first evidence of my connection to this great diplomatic enterprise, my first diplomatic passport. There it is. Number 2927. There weren't a lot of people then. And, and uh, if you open it up, there's a picture of a little 11-year-old John Kerry. And no, you will not get to see it. <laughs> and uh, then in the description, it says uh, height, four foot three, <laughs> hair brown. So as you can see, the only thing that's changed is the height. <laughs> uh, and the first stamp in it, the first, uh, the first uh, arrival was 1954 in Le Havre, and back then, the State Department, we, we went over, we spent six days at sea on the SS America. And the State Department and the United States government uh, sent us over, the entire family, first class. <laughs> Don't get any ideas. <laughs> anyway, I, uh, we went to Berlin, and this was not too long after the war, and I, I used to ride my bicycle around Berlin. It was my pastime, my passion, and rode everywhere, the Grunewald, you know, around the lakes, up and down the Kurfürstendamm, the church with the steeple burned down. 
past the Reichstag, burnt out, past Brandenburg Gate, past Hitler's tomb with these amazing, uh, huge uh, concrete slabs blown up. And, and, and I just roamed around. It was stunning uh, how little control there was. And one day, in my sense of 12-year-old adventure, I think it was then, I used this very passport to pass through into the East sector, the Russian sector. And I bicycled around. And I'll tell you, as a 12-year-old kid, I really did notice the starkness, the desolation. In fact, I was thinking about it the other day. If the tabloids today knew I had done that, I can see the headlines that say, Kerry's early communist connections, you know, <laughs> uh, something like that. But uh, that's the world we live in, folks. But, but I would reassure them by saying, I really noticed the difference. Uh, between East and West, there were very few people. They were dressed in dark clothing. They kind of held their heads down. I noticed all this. Uh, you know, there was no joy in those streets. And when I came back, I felt this remarkable sense of relief and a great lesson about the virtue of freedom and the virtue of uh, the principles, that ideals that we live by and that drive us. I was enthralled. Now, when my dad learned what I'd done, he was not enthralled. <laughs> and I got a tongue lashing. I was told I could have been an international incident. He could have lost his job. Da 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 da. And my passport, this very passport, was promptly yanked. <laughs> and I was summarily grounded. <laughs> anyway, lessons learned. But uh, that was a great adventure, and I will tell you, 57 years later today, this is another great adventure. I am so proud to enter into the Harry Truman Building, the mothership, as I think you call it. <laughs> and I'll tell you, you know, Harry Truman, whose office was just down this, the, the, the hall from mine in the United States Senate, within about a year of being president, came and said, you know, the principles of American foreign policy are firmly founded, or the foundation is firmly rooted in righteousness and justice. We get to do great things here. This is a remarkable place. And I'm here today to ask you, on behalf of the country, uh, I need your help. President Obama needs your help to help us to do everything we can to strengthen our nation and to carry those ideals out into the world. Here, we can do the best of things that you can do in government. That's what excites me. We get to try to make our nation safer. We get to try to make peace in the world, a world where there is far too much conflict and far too much killing. There are alternatives. We get to lift people out of poverty. We get to try to cure disease. We get to try to empower people with human rights. We get to speak to those who have no voice. We get to talk about empowering people through our ideals. And through those ideals, hopefully, they can change their lives. That's what's happening in the world today. We get to live the ideals of our nation. And in doing so, I think, we can make our country stronger, and we can actually make the world more peaceful. So I look forward to joining with you as we march down this road together, living the ideals of our country, which is the best, I imagine. What other job can you have where you get up every day and advance the cause of nation, and also keep faith with the ideals of your country on which it is founded, and most critically, uh, meet our obligations to our fellow travelers on this planet. That's as good as it gets. And I'm proud to be part of it with you. So now let's get to work. Thank you very, very much.